And the greatest thing about this car is just how drivable it is. Uh, I'm just keep putting my foot in it. Doesn't overheat, no tire rub. You know, a lot of times when you turn the wheel to the left or the right sharply, you, you hear just a shudder, none of that. It all seems really solid, really well put together. And it just, it just lays the power down with such force. It's pretty amazing. This is a very tempting automobile. <laughs> what an episode of Jay Leno's Garage, the car we're featuring today, a very special car. This is the uh, Dodge Demon 170. Uh, this is the actual car that was in the last call uh, party they had in Las Vegas where they brought it in on a helicopter and put it down on the track and, and just did incredible times with it. And it was doing it on alcohol. Now people say, oh, that's cheating. No, it's not, because if you go to a gas station, it's, it's a flex fuel car. You can run E85 on it and it will adapt to whatever percentage of alcohol is in it to give you the most power that you can. So the computer does everything here. It's not like, oh, there's all kinds of trick stuff you have to do to get this time. You just have to know how to drive and the car pretty much handles everything else. There's all sorts of fascinating different features on this car, like the wheels and some of the other things. We're gonna find out right now from Tim Kaniskas. He's the CEO of Dodge. Tim, come on in. How are you? I'm great, how are you, Jay? Well, thanks for inviting me to Vegas. That was a lot of fun. It was a great event. Because we're all thinking, well, how are they going to make an entrance here? And then you see, you see this military helicopter, the twin rotor deal, and it's got the, the car on there. Was the driver in the car while he was in the helicopter? The driver was actually not in the car. Our original intention was to have him in the car. Mm -hmm. um, but the day of the event, FAA said we were overweight, and they actually told us we couldn't do it. And we said, no, 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 we got to have the helicopter. That's key to this whole thing. So we spent the whole day cutting the platform to get that down to weight so that we could bring it on the helicopter. That was important for us. So it was a, a, like a, a pallet? What was it exactly? It was on a big steel plate. Right. And what we didn't realize, we were underweight until we realized that the rotors were putting downforce on the exterior areas of the plate. So oh, I see. So the, hel oh, so the rotor itself was pushing the car down. Oh, and we okay. couldn't meet weight. So we spent the whole day with a torch cutting that plate to the contours of the car. So if you watch the video, you see the plate looks very small for the car. We had to do that to make weights to bring it in. So well, how was it secured to the plate? Well, it was just strapped down like you would strap it on a trailer with the wheels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. It was, right. it, was, it was high tech. We really thought through it. Now, these wheels, I don't recognize them. Tell us about the wheels. The wheels actually are one of the enablers to the performance of this car. When we started working on the car, we had an intention to upgrade a Demon. What we ended up doing is actually creating a whole new car. Everything other than the sheet metal of this car is brand new. Really? The, yeah, and the wheels were a key enabler. When we're looking for thousandths of a second, we needed every possible place to get it. The wheels are not just lighter. They're not just almost 30 pounds lighter. It's where the weight is. So the weight is centered in the middle, mm -hmm. and the light part is the carbon fiber rim on the outside. It actually allows it to spin faster, like putting a lightweight flywheel on something. Right, right. So when this car starts moving, it accelerates crazy. It runs 60 foot times in the 120s, which wow. is full on race car time. And what tire are these, are these demon specific tire? We went to Mickey Thompson and we had these designed for this car. We wanted to take the flares off of the front right. like we had on the original one because that saved us 16 pounds in the most important part of the car for weight transfer. So we right. got 16 pounds off the front. They designed this tire to go with this wheel for us but specifically what we really wanted was the back tire because the back tire is really aggressive. Right. We've got a 17 by 11 on the back with a 315 Mickey with a ton of sidewall. Most people aren't used to seeing that much sidewall but we needed it for traction. Right. We actually, that, there's so much traction with this combination, we had to completely retune the suspension to handle it. Well, I like the fact you went to Mickey Thompson. I, back when I heard that, it made me smile because we always tend to think Michelin or any of the other, whereas Mickey Thompson was just an old school racer. Uh, maybe perhaps younger viewers might not remember from the 60s, but he was the guy. He did land speed, he did drag, he did everything. I knew they were still around, but I didn't realize it was still that big, you know? So it's kind of fun to see the Mickey Thompson name on, on the tire as well again. We've sold 80,000 Hellcats. It's hard to believe we sold 80,000 of them. We looked at the people that were actually racing them and what are they doing? Most popular things is they're running on E85 for the detonation resistance and right. they're running that tire combination. So we said, those are two things that we've got to have in the base plan and then move from there and really tune it. The E85 thing I found fascinating, just the fact that the computer does it all, because I thought, well, you buy one of these and they got to go and get a five-gallon can of 
and, and put it in. No, you don't have to do it. You just pull up to any E85 pump and you're fine, right? You don't have to do anything to run this car. Yeah. When you get to the track, you don't need to change the wheels. You don't need to cool the car down because it has a chiller built in. And whatever range of alcohol you have in, like let's say you're driving to the track and you got a half a tank still of pump gas, mm -hmm. and then you put in E85, the computer will tell you right on the screen. It'll say, based on the amount of alcohol you put in, you're at 77% alcohol. Not 85, but you're at 77. Right. And it will remap the engine for maximum power at that mixture. Tell people about the chiller that you mentioned. That's really fascinating. That's, I think that's such a clever idea. Tell them what the, exactly what that means. The chiller is something that we designed on the original Demon, then we carried over to some of the other cars. And the intent there was on a supercharged application, you build a lot of heat. Right. We wanted to get as much heat out of the car as possible, the, the air charge. So what we did was we designed it so the air conditioner can actually chill refrigerant that's used to chill the intercooler. So you right. have a normal water to air intercooler, but then we super chill the water. Right. So when your car is driving around on a 90 degree day, your engine thinks it's at 75 degrees. And of course, cooler gas means the molecules are closer together, so you get more power. Much denser for more power. Right, so, that's why people fill up with gas in the morning rather than late afternoon if you're hot in California, because you actually get less gas because, because of the heat. Not much, but yeah, maybe a pint or a quart or something like that. And it comes with a single seat, which really made me laugh. So when you buy this, you get a single seat and you can, you can get the optional passenger seat. I imagine most, does that pretty much bolt in and out pretty easy? It does, it's pretty heavy, but it mm. comes in and out pretty easy. What, yeah. what we generally see is, we generally see people buying all the seats, and then if they go to the track, they take out the front seat, because the front seat's about 70, 75 pounds. Yeah. And you want to do that, because if you buy it as a single seat application, we disable all the airbag systems. Well, you know, I like, I love the seat, and that's my favorite thing about this car. I always call it the Great American Road Trip car, because if you're gonna go to Vegas, this is what you want. You don't want some little Recaro bucket seat you're sitting like this. It's like a big, comfortable chair, and you just put your foot down and you go. I mean, it's a lot of fun. And of course, it comes with the factory roll bar, correct? We don't sell that oh, as you don't an option, sell it. but our direct connection high performance division sells it after the fact. So I after see. you buy the car, then okay. you can buy the roll bar. Because to go to a track, if you're under, under 10 seconds, you've got to have a roll bar. They, right? they actually changed the rules. If you remember the original Demon, mm -hmm. we were the first car that NHRA, not the first car, but we were banned because we were too fast for their specifications. Well, that was my favorite thing. I remember they, uh, MHRA sent you a letter saying, I'm sorry, the car's too fast, you can't run at the track. And then you used that in the advertising, which I thought was great. Were they mad about that? They, they thought we were going to be mad about it. I loved it. I actually hugged them when they gave me the letter. I'm like, this, <laughs> this is marketing gold. I love this. And the rule was if you ran faster than 10 seconds, you needed the roll cage, which we didn't have. So we got banned. Right. Then a couple years later, because the cars were getting so fast, they changed the rules. And they said, okay, under 10 seconds is fine. You just can't go under nine seconds. If you go under nine seconds, then you need a cage and a parachute if you break 150 miles an hour. Right. So when we started working on this car, we said, well, we know where the goal post is. We got to be banned again. So we got to be eight seconds and we got to be over 150 right. because we want to be banned again and we want a parachute. Can they buy the parachute through Direct Connection? Direct Connection sells the parachute as well. <laughs> I wonder if anybody's going to use that on the street. How long does it take to repack a parachute? You know, uh, depends on how many times you've done it. Yeah. Me, that I've only done it once, a yeah. long time, yeah, because you're yeah. very nervous that you want to get it right. The guys that do it, they do it pretty quick. And of course, it's got the eight-speed transmission, which the normal Hellcat has. Is it beefier? Or is it stronger? Um, this is actually the same one that we ran in the original Demon, but we completely changed how the trans brake works in this car. Mm -hmm. This is pretty high tech the way we did this. The original trans brake was fantastic for performance, right. but you had to really study it and practice it to get it to work, and people had trouble with it. So we changed the HMI on this one. On this one, you literally hold the paddle and your foot's on the floor. You're full gas and you release the paddle to launch the car. Oh, okay. now, now that's amazing because it's simple to use, but the problem with that is you're generally gonna blow away the tires. If right. you're not on a great track, great conditions, you'll blow away the tires. So we designed in here a system where you can go every 10th of a second and you can literally on the head unit pull out torque or pull it out in the shifts. So if you launch the car using the trans brake and you realize, hey, 15 feet out, I'm breaking loose the tires, or one to two shift, I'm breaking loose the tires. You go to the screen, go to the one to two shift, pull out a little bit of torque, run it again, until you get it to hold, and then it's like a video game each time. The brakes are Brembo, of course, as they always are. Same brakes as we had before, and we're able to fit them in with the new package, because we went to a 17 in the back this time, which was important. 
And there's no, well, you can get a sunroof on this, right? You can, you can if you really, really want it. But you don't want make people to buy the sunroof. You know, it's funny, on the original Demon, the sunroof is $5,000. And people still bought it. The problem with the sunroof is, look, I like sunroofs as much as anybody, but you're putting a lot of weight right here, right. way above the center of gravity. Gotcha. And you want as much weight transfer as possible. So putting weight there is the last thing you want to do on a drag car. And the what F is the sun, how much weight are we talking about? This, this is about a little over 4,200. So 4,250, 4,275. Yeah. And then putting all that weight up here is the worst place to put it. So right. we said, okay, if you want a sunroof, it's $5,000. Right. This time around, we really wanted to make the car as fast as possible. We were looking for thousands of a second. Right. And when we were chopping weight, like taking the front flares off and going to the wheel, the wheel's a really expensive wheel. Wheel actually, we lose money on every single one of these wheels. Even though it's a high priced option, we lose money. So we said, how are we gonna make this wheel at least accessible to as many people as possible and still not lose a ton of money? So we said, make the sunroof $10,000. The money that we make on the sunroof offsets the wheels. Right. So the guy that wants to go fast, the guy that bought the sunroof is paying for the guy that wants to go fast with the wheels. All if right. you buy them both, then great. Well, let's open the hood and show what we have under here. Let's see. Where's my same place? Yep. Now you don't notice a lot at first, right. but there's a couple very significant things. The throttle body mm -hmm. is 105 millimeters. It's a massive throttle body. New elbow feeding into a three liter supercharger. This is the same supercharger that we used on the Elephant. Right. So a lot of work was done here for the intake. What we found was when we did this and we were able to take some more timing because the E85, our cylinder pressures went up to 2,500 PSI. That is a massive amount of cylinder pressure. It's right. actually 25% higher than we had on the original Demon on race gas. So all of the stories you heard about us blowing up engines, people thought it was marketing. No, it's true. We, we were literally grenading these engines. We, we, a dyno cell caught on fire. We were blowing them up so bad. So this engine is completely new now. So new supercharger, new throttle body. We redid the heads so that we could use studs in the heads. And then re redid the block machining. New crank, new pistons, new rods, new bearings. The only thing that carries over from the original is the camshaft. That's right. it. A big k and filter here, right? You don't see it on this one because this is a pre-production car. This one has a red block, right. the same that we had on the Demon, the same we had on the Red Eye. The actual production cars will have, first time ever, a yellow block. Tell us about, I see a yellow eye here on the uh, so devil guy. When we did the Demon, we made the block red. They were always hemi-orange. We made it red because that kind of fit with the theme of the Demon. It was the first time and it was interesting. Then after the Demon, we did the Red Eye. And what was important about the Red Eye was it had the engine from the Demon in it. So we said it had the soul of the Demon, right. so it had the red block. So that's why it had the Hellcat logo with the red jewel oh, because okay. it had the red block in it. So when we went to this, we said we're going to E85 now. We want the yellow theme, so the yellow block. So now the logo has the yellow jewel in it to tell you that it's got the yellow block in it. And the 170 neck tattoo tells you that it's 170 proof. Why not carbon fiber for the hood? That would have been a lot of development and we would have had to re-crash test the car. There's a lot of expense in crash testing the car. Oh, I guess that's you. Every time you change a part, you got to re-crash yep. test the car, don't you? Oh, okay. And that's a functional hood scoop, obviously. Uh, the largest yeah. hood scoop we've ever done and functional. This one's pre-production, so you don't see it here, but the actual production ones will say alcohol injected right here. Oh, Small okay. little detail, but very cool. As long as the driver's not alcohol injected, you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're okay then. How about the front splitter? Is that all? Is that stuff? That's all the same. That's all the same. L little bit different because we don't have the flares on the front, but essentially all the same. Everything is new about the car except for the sheet metal. Sheet metal is carryover. Everything else is new. Drive line is all new. Much larger drive shaft. Differential, we put a lot of time into the differential. We actually changed the case for more mounting area in the case, and we did a pressure casting. So it's not a billet housing, but it's a pressure casting. Right. So we took all the porosity out of the case. So the case and the gearing now is about 50% stronger than we had on the original Demon. And how much pressure was that driver under? Hundred and fifty million people watched that live stream. Wow. And it was one take. We had the explosives behind him for one time. If he had to do it a second time, there was gonna be no explosives and we needed to catch that wheelie. Uh, so yeah, it was a lot of pressure, but he pulled it off. Well, you know, it's so funny because I heard people saying, Oh, as it happened, oh, they had the they had the fireworks and explosions. So if it doesn't meet the time, that'll be destroyed. Everybody had a reason why it wouldn't go under nine seconds, you know. 
Uh, and it was, it was, and then he turned around and did it again. And that was pretty amazing. That was the, pretty the, cool. This, the second time was just for fun, to a big burnout the second time. Yeah, well, no, but it, it was great. It was great. Well, can we take it for a ride? Absolutely. Okay. But there's only one seat, so I'm sorry, Tim. You'll have to stay here. <laughs> Hey, thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. Thank and you. And congratulations. It's really fun to see a car company focusing on the, on the performance. I mean, obviously, all the safety and all that is very important, but it's fun just to get back to the fun factor of the car. You know, especially all advertising now is, you know, it just makes me laugh. I always laugh when I see a Dodge commercial because I know there's going to be a burnout in it. <laughs> it always makes me smile. We did this car. If you think about the history of building these cars, we've sold, it's hard to believe, but we've sold 2 million muscle cars right. since this current generation. 2 million and a billion horsepower. Right. So not that many people are gonna get this car. Right. But it's just like watching a sports team. You may not play the sport, but you're gonna wear the jersey. Right. We built this car to celebrate the brand that these 2 million people love. Okay, before I take it for a ride, this shows you what a fan I am. We, we're gonna. You know, I have these Jay Leno car care products, and we're going to give away a kit, six bottles of all the car care products that we make in a, in a special kind of carbon fiber box that'll fit in the back here. And well, here's an example. See, we got the, well, we got the, the Demon logo on there. Anybody who buys one of these, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll give you the six bottle kit. We'll put it in the trunk. That's fantastic. Yeah, and it'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. So very cool, very cool. That'll be one of those things that's part of the story many, many years from now. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Maybe somebody, when, when they sell one of these in the year 2050, oh, look, and it's still got the six bottles, you know, in the back. So, well, okay. Well, thanks for making this the, the, the muscle car brand. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Jay. Okay, let's, let's go for a spin. Sure, what a serious drag car this is. There are drag options on the screen. What do we have here? Th this is really one of the key performance enablers of this car. And when you think about it, it's software. You know, people always want to talk about hardware and right. horsepower and stuff like that. Um, people key into the horsepower. They say, well, it's got 1,025 horsepower. That's amazing. Yeah, that's great. That helps. But really the key to running those times and the 60 foot time of 124, 60 foot time, really the key is not the power. It's really having the complete balance and getting the car off the line as fast as possible. Right. That's where this comes in. A rear wheel drive car is always going to be harder to launch than an all wheel drive car. Right. So we need to get maximum weight transfer. That's why the car does a wheelie. We want to get all the way to the back to get weight transfer. The other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we don't spin the tires because spinning is never winning. It right. looks cool, but you go much slower. So we devised a torque management system. This is full on race car technology where let's say you launch the car with the trans brake and 30 feet out, you lose traction, or maybe right. in the one, two shift, you lose traction. You can come back right from your head unit. This blue line here is going to tell you, I know where you are. I know what the temperature is. I know what the density is. I know what the maximum power output of this car is right here. It's showing just under 1100 horsepower. You say, well, 1100 horsepower. What does that mean? Well, you got to remember, we rate these cars under controlled conditions by the SAE. So yeah, it produces 100, uh, 1,025 horsepower. Right. But if you get to a cold track and low DA and below sea level air, it'll produce more than that because you got more dense air. Okay. So this says this is your maximum potential. But oh, don't you know, you're braking traction 30 feet out. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say, I want to go in and I want to actually manage that torque so I don't spin the tires. I think I'm about 3 tenths of a second off of the starting line where I'm losing traction. I can go into that point and I can literally change my torque setting right there. Wow. Or I can say, you know what? I'm getting off the line great, but I'm breaking the tires loose in my one to two shift. I can go into my one to two shift. I can literally pull a little bit of torque out so I don't spin the tires. Okay. Nobody's got anything like this outside the race world. Well, they always say horsepower sells core cars, torque wins races, you know? And it's, so you're just managing the torque. So if it, 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 it's almost like an anti, lock brake, if it senses it's going to break loose, it backs off a bit, right? Yep. So you're constantly making traction. Boy, that, yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty amazing. And you can adjust it all the way down. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Through the shifts and through the torque curve. Yeah. All the way up to 1.66 seconds. So yeah. it'll get you past your 60 foot time. If you're spinning the tires 
past that point, you, you, you got some bigger problems to worry about. And your zero to 60 time is 1.66 1. 1. 1. <laughs> with rollout. And, and people gave me a hard time about why you say rollout because you didn't say rollout on the original Demon. And right. it's true, on the original Demon, we rated it with rollout and without rollout, but everyone is going to the with rollout. So you know what? If everyone is playing that game, I want a level playing field and we're gonna say what ours is with rollout. Yeah. And, and the advantage to a car like this, the car launches so hard, that extra 10 to 12 inches of rollout can make a big difference. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fascinating. I mean, it really is about as high tech as you can get. Well, very good, Tim. Hey, thanks for showing that. I, I wonder how many people actually take the time to study this and, and learn it, you know? It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. What other drag options are there? So you can do the trans brake setup, right. and now you can actually have your foot completely on the floor, so you can dial in an RPM. So if the track can only handle 1,800 RPM, you can dial in 1,800 RPM, have your foot right on the floor and launch the car with the paddle only. Wow. And then you have the traditional line lock that we've had gotcha, uh, gotcha. for a long time. Which but, is the front brakes, so like yep. the front brakes. The, the key to all this though is we tell the people that this is not a video game. You gotta learn how to drive this car. Right. And, and I always make the analogy to a guitar player. Kenny Wayne Shepard is a fan of the Dodge brand. He owns some of our cars. He's arguably one of the best guitar players in the world. Right. His guitar can perform. Just if I hand that to you, it doesn't mean you can play it like him, right, right, but you gotta right. learn. Same gotcha. thing with this car. You're not gotcha. gonna jump in the car and run those times. You gotta learn it, set yeah. it up. Very good. Hey, that's terrific. Thanks. Three tires with this thing. I just kind of put my foot in it just a little bit at the light there, and I see these two huge stripes right behind me. Hilarious. It's hard to believe this is what a 4,200 pound car. Uh, I mean, it, it seems pretty light on its feet. It's amazing. <laughs> well, this is, this is just crazy. I mean, what a torque monster this thing is. Jeez, it just pulls, pulls so hard. You know, there is no substitution for immaturity. I'm just going to wipe foot and see what this thing does. Here we go. Go. Get rubber in all eight gears. Oh my God. And you know, that's just, that's just putting your foot down. I mean, there's no, uh, you, you could burn these tires off in 10 seconds with this thing. Oh my God. You know what's so funny? I mean, I grew up in the era when you bought a Hemi car, it was big, it was clumsy, but it was fast. This thing seems like a ballet dancer. It seems, with all the electronics, it seems so light on its feet. It's hard to believe it's over two tons worth of car sitting here. I mean, it just, and this engine just revs. Oh my God. I mean, how often can you buy a production car that can do a wheelie? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's pretty good. You know, it's funny, you're driving a car with this much horsepower, it doesn't always have a splitter in the front that's hitting the ground and you're breaking it. You know, I've got my, I love my 350R Mustang, but I've gone through about half a dozen splitters on the front end of that thing because I'm always, you're just always breaking it, you know, because it's so low. Whereas this thing has nice normal ground clearance. It's comfortable. It's extremely fast. I, I realize, you know, the Tesla Plaid can probably pretty much match it, but not with the sense of speed that you get from this. Those tires breaking loose, the, 
you know, just hearing the, the engine bouncing off the limiter. I mean, it's just amazing. It's really a lot of fun. It's, it's great, and it, it feels bulletproof. You know, the selling point to me is that uh, computer that sort of analyzes the fuel and lets you know what, what, how much horsepower you can have so you don't detonate this motor. That's really brilliant. That's really brilliant. Because in the old days, you had to sort of open the hood and get under there and do a lot of changes, whereas this, it all does it automatically. You know, if you want to run straight E85 in it to get the full 1,025 horsepower, just put it in the tank, that's all you got to do. Or you hear that supercharger just whine. You know, Tim Kineskis is a real car guy. I mean, he talks performance in front of everything else. You know, it's not, I mean, obviously sales and all that kind of thing, but he's such a car guy. Whatever tweaks he has to do to get this thing to turn out this kind of power, he will do. And that's pretty amazing. <laughs> you can feel those tires wrinkle as they grip. It's just amazing. I'm not sure if it's official, but I think this is the fastest, world's fastest production of automobile, certainly in the quarter mile. I'm not sure if it's official, but I think it is, that this is the world's fastest production car uh, with an internal combustion engine. You know, it's not electric. I mean, the greatest thing about this car is just how drivable it is. Uh, I'm just keeping putting my foot in it. Doesn't overheat, I don't, no tire rub. You know, a lot of times when you turn the wheel to the left or the right sharply, you, you hear just a shudder, none of that. It all seems really solid, really well put together, and it just, <laughs> It just lays the power down with such force. It's, 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 it's pretty amazing. This is a very tempting automobile. I suppose if you're gonna go out, this is a good choice for last with the internal combustion engines. It's like that scene in Mad Max, you know, loss of the V8 interceptors, you know, one of those deals. But this, this is the last of the V8 interceptors. This is pretty cool. So I wanna thank uh, Tim Kaniskis for being the ultimate car guy and built in pretty much, uh, building pretty much the, the ultimate muscle car. I'll put my foot in it one last time. See you guys next week. Yeah!